Hey guys, Romy here. Please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for How to Get Away with Murder, Season 4, Episode 6. It's entitled, uh, Stay Strong, Mama. Now, the episode starts off with... Oh, Jesus. The episode starts off with Anne Lee. She's talking to her therapist, uh, Isaac. He's a little over. You can tell that he's flustered. Anne Lee's is kind of talking about her day, how everything's been going, and she just wants re assurance that you know am i a monster and she's like no you're not a monster but you're more complicated than you know um we see that isaiah isaac is actually in therapy himself and i looked at the person he was with i said oh that's his ex-wife i already knew it i th these things i just know these things i was like that's his ex-wife i i know it um and he's talking to her saying how she's definitely a trigger he she's very complicated but she's made so much progress he doesn't want to risk her progress if he just like dumps her now and just pushes her off to another client and Annalise is just so focused on getting her dreams accomplished she even kind of talked about how Bonnie almost ruined stuff for her and she's doing things for the right reason but the guy's like look you need to actually focus on some of the really major hurdles in your life. So what about Sam? What about your husband? He was like, what? Write a letter to Sam. That's your homework. Homework. Oh my God. I'm so stressed. This is tired. I just told you. No, no, no. This is important. Come on, do it. Um, so now Connor's waiting for her outside. So, oh God, Connor. Uh, Connor's waiting for her outside because he's like, here's how this goes. Everything that you're trying to do, I want to go and help you. Right now, you're essentially being railroaded with a class action lawsuit that you're doing. And here's why. So then we see Bonnie. We see Bonnie and the other um, DA. Because the original DA, the head DA, was like, oh, this woman right here, she was able to go and spot that Annalise was trying to go and make a mockery of all of this. And so now she's going to be appointed to ADA. I said, you're, you're appointed to what? You're appointed to what? I love that Nate was over it. Nate looked at her like, are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Now, Annalise is at the jail. She's talking to her ex cellmate who's essentially um, her house is potentially being taken away because she sold drugs out of that house. The issue is that her mother and Chids live in that house right now. And the, uh, the of course, the DA office is trying to railroad Annalise. And so they're trying to, um, you know, hurt the people around her. Now, Bunkmate's son is there and he has a mouth. He's just like his mother. He has a mouth. He's like, wait a minute. So you say you're supposed to help your mo my mother. How are you not helping her? Like, what are you trying to do? She was like, have some respect. I said, boy, you better watch yourself. And Connor's like, she's the best. She's a boss. Trust and believe. If she says she's going to do it, she's going to do it. And I said, ain't this boy a mess? This boy is a mess. He is a mess. But he's a character. Let's keep him around a little bit longer. Frank is working out. Because he's a little stressed. He's a little stressed about getting the results um, from his uh, from his test to see if he was able to go and practice law. Now, Asher, he's concerned because he's like, yo, so do you know anything about Michaela? Maybe dibbling, dabbling, or what, Michaela and Laurel, like what's going on there? Like maybe they're... I said, what? They're not lesbians. They're not tongue buddies. Like, what... <laughs> Frank was like, he was like, you better stop. Oliver goes and talks to Michaela, and he's just freaking out. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe there's a breach. They're doing the stuff. They're bringing, moving things around. They're changing credentials. Maybe there was a breach. Maybe there's a breach. Tegan has a case, not a case. Tegan has to go upstairs, and she's bringing Michaela with her. And so she's like, look, here's how this goes. You need to go and do this briefing, do that briefing. Um, Michaela's still following her. And Tegan's like, yo, what are you still doing? Like, get, get back to work. But the important thing for this scene is that we see that Laurel's father is there. He's there. We don't know why he's there. Well, I know. But at this point, we don't know why he's there. So now we see Laurel, because we just talked about her father. Laurel is getting the ultrasound, and the baby looks like an alien, obviously, at that point in time. 
and she wants to do a paternity test. I said, you ho. Oh, I hate you. Oh, oh, I hate your character. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Jesus. Anyway, Laurel gets called by Michaela and Michaela says, your father's here. I don't know why he's here, what's going on. Wait, but my father always calls me, you know, when he's in town. Ding, ding, ding. The meeting is done. So now the father is calling uh, Laurel and he wants to have dinner with her. Remember, she said she had an abortion. So how is she going to hide this baby? And their relationship so tragic that I feel like it's not that hard. Here's the... Makes me stop it. Stop it. Anyway. Uh, then we get to Bonnie. Bonnie is talking to the head DA and... She, no, she's talking to Isaac. I'm sorry. She's talking to Isaac. And Isaac's like, look, don't leave. I'm not telling Annalise anything because I break confidentiality. Well, you came down here. It's like, yeah, but here's the thing. I want you to continue therapy because you were making great progress. I said, Isaac, I don't know. I don't know. Something about your story is a little shaky. I feel like you're trying to get information out of Bonnie, Bonbon, bon, so that you could go and use it on Annalise. That's what you're really trying to do. Now, uh, we see that uh, Nate notices that, wait a minute, who's that over there? What's going on there? Annalise goes down to the courthouse and she's trying to talk to a judge and say, look, it's crazy. Like, why are you just letting this happen? Why are you letting the DA off his railroad a mother who's incarcerated and her mother's taking care of her kids? Like, it it's too much. How is this fair? So Annalise loses that and she's like, this guy's a punk. I'm over it. Uh, Connor just had that look of, so what are we going to do next? Like he's, you can tell he's reinvigorated. Even his face looks different. Even his face looks different. He, he now kind of looks like, okay, I'm not just nibbling. <laughs> he, he's focused. So now they're going to go to the next phase. Uh, Tegan is talking to Michaela and in comes Asher. Asher's like, yep, boyfriend over here. Oh my God, the legendary Tegan, I love you. And she's like, oh, thank you. He's a keeper girl. Michaela dragged Asher right out there. I was like, so what are you trying to do? Asher said, I know what you did. What are you talking about? I saw you weren't at work. You were at Laurel's. What's going on? He said, okay. And you know, this is Michaela. So she's good. She's, she's good. She's able to go and flip it and say, oh, I was I was doing birthing stuff, like a Lama stuff with Laurel. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, because you know she doesn't have any one. It's like, oh, okay. Wait a minute, what'd you think? So you're not like... <laughs> she's like, wait, what? What was wrong with you? Now, Annalise decides she's going to make a scene. So she goes to the DA's office and tells everyone, y'all trash, how are you trying to railroad an incarcerated mother of two who's mother own mother is taking care of the kids and you think it's funny oh uh, look forget my case right now you actually think it's okay to go and take away her house or threaten to take away her house she has nothing her family has nothing except for that house that's the only thing they have and i get it that some of you will never understand how it feels to uh be so distraught and destitute but just imagine it for a moment i said that's right now at least Hit them where it hurts. Hit shame. Shame them. Shame them to heck. Nate decided, and you know Nate was happy to see Annalise do all that. Like, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Bonnie goes and interrupts Nate while he's in the bathroom. I said, oh, God, Bonnie, you're loads of comfortable doing all that. And Nate was just like, look. Look. Because Bonnie said, I went down to the jail and the prison and you lied. You lied about, you know, Annalise not working on the case, not knowing about it. She was like, are you on that crack again? Are you on that Annalise crack again? He said, no, no, no. You are. You're actually willing to railroad her in her case. Regardless of how you feel about her, she's doing something positive. And she is. She's doing something positive. And because you're dismay, you don't like her so much, you don't trust her so much that you're willing to go and hurt these people who have nothing. You know how that feels. I know how that feels. How dare you do something like that to someone else? 
Bonnie was shook after that. I said, Bonnie, you got to go and re-up on that therapy quick. So now Laurel's trying to go and get dressed to hide the fact that she's pregnant. She might as well just go in all black, which is what she chooses. She's talking to uh, Oliver and Michaela, and <laughs> uh, they're kind of talking about, okay, look, it's weird. I don't think we can go in because they're doing some security stuff and upgrades here. And I don't know what's up with your father being here, what, how it all correlates. Do you really think you should go and risk exposing the fact that you're pregnant? I have to go and figure out why is he here? What is he going to say? What is he going to do? In comes Asher. Asher knocks and he has a teddy bear and he's like, you know what? So I heard from my bae that you wanted some Lamaze help, that you just need assistance. And you know, I'm here. I know I'm not Wes, but I'm here for you if, you know, you need me, if you'd like to have me around. And I said, oh my God, Asher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Laurel had a moment too, like, <laughs> oh, anyway, Connor's really happy. He calls up Oliver, Oliver's like, it's great. You should have seen that, Lisa. I mean, she was scary. She commanded the room and told, you know, just told them how much they should be ashamed of themselves and what work they're really doing over here. Oliver's lying like, oh, you know, everything's cool here. They're just beefing up some security, but then, you know, everything's great. So I'll call you later. Okay, bye. So, in comes a revigorated Connor, like, hey, hey, yep, so what are we doing next? What are we doing next? We're going to eat some food and think, like, I, I need a moment to decompress. Come on now. I just need a moment to decompress. I mean, that should have been on, t um, you should have broadcasted that. That should have been on social media. You should have live streamed that. That was amazing. That was a show. Anyway, so we get past that to Michaela. She go, well, um, Laurel makes it to dinner and she's waiting for her father. And Michaela has some alcohol for Steve, for Steve. And so it's like, I know you so much. I mean, I know you so well. I've studied up on you. I know everything about you. He said, oh, God, Michaela, you're, upset. you're OCD. I mean, you're ADD, you're OCD, all of it. Your OCD is coming out. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Chill out. <sighs> well, at least, while she's seen that ice cream, it's looking over like, kind of like, you don't change, boy. I mean, just last night, you were going and crying and saying how you are suicidal and that you were gonna cheat on your dude. And now, see over here, you're inspired. You're trying to change the world. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, so Michaela kind of just reinforces the fact that she wants um, that Asher, you know, he's just a clown. He does some mess sometimes, but you know, he's nice to have around. See, Ian said, look, Tegan said, you just be very thankful that someone wants to put up with you and all the stuff you have going on because he might be annoying right now, but that just means that he cares. He wants to have you around. He just wants a little bit more of your attention. That's all he wants. It's better than not having anyone. It's better than not having sex. It's better than a lot of things. So don't take it for granted. And you know, Michaela is so, so career driven. She said, you know, that's cute and all, but I'm not really focused on that. So then Michaela said, Oh, so you gave your relationship up for this job? Sure did. Well, why don't you go and um, tell me about her? I said, her? So when we were all like, mm -mm, the scene's giving us this weird energy when she first, um, you know, was complimenting Annalise, we were all right. Dang, we're good. We are good. And I said, Michaela, what are you doing? Because then she gets closer to her. She kind of has the girls out a little bit. I said, Michaela, you ain't slick. You ain't slick. And Tegan likes it, so she's going to accept it for now. But you ain't slick. We see what you're trying to do. Trying to cozy up to her. Trying to cozy up to her. Now, Laurel's father's there. And the reason why he's there is because he essentially lets it be known that guess who's going public? I'm like, public what? He owns that company that um he, he owns a company and not that company but he owns i forgot what the company's called and it's going public and he's transferring 10 percent to laurel's brother 10 percent to her and she said i'm gonna be a lawyer i can't be involved in all this mess and she said oh he was like don't worry about it it's all legit it's legit money and that's the same news that Michaela learned from Tegan that 
um, whatever the company's name is, is going public and the amount of shares that uh, amount of shares that she has, she can take it, she can take all of her experience, all her clients and go elsewhere, go wherever she wants, open up shop and take her with her. And you know, you know, Michaela's like, absolutely. So then once we all get back to uh, Wes's apartment, it's a mess because Laura's like, we have to go and take them down. We have to go and, you know, expose the, uh, the public offering before it becomes official so that it can get canceled, it can get ruined. And I said, oh. <sighs> all that money. I get it. I get it. Wes is their friend and he supersedes money. But all that money, you're telling me you can't take down the father with all that money? You really think these lawyers, a large corporation is going to allow you to mess with the IPO and just you'll get out unscathed? Because this is the problem with Laurel. Laurel wants them to go and do all of that. But then, because Laurel's saying, look, uh, the time frame of all of this, we were caught up in the murder. We were caught up in, um, you know, conspiracy theories and all of this. And because of that, it would have messed up her father's IPO. It would have just completely derailed it. So they need someone to go and take the heat. So that's why they killed Wes instead. I said, oh my God. I'm like, this makes sense, but this just sounds, it's a little, it's wrapped up a little too well. Uh, this is the thing I don't like. It's wrapped up a little bit too well. That's not how, it's not coming out naturally. It just kind of feels like, okay, all of a sudden, Laura was able to put up the pieces that her father had some involvement. And now, Laura will put the pieces together again to figure out why her father did it. It just doesn't sound right. It just sounds like it's too convenient. So that's why Laura's just like, okay, we all have to come together. And we have to come together now for Wes. And I said, oh, God, this whole for Wes type of thing. I'm just over it. I'm just over it. It's just too nicely knit. Okay. I have to breathe because I'm not breathing right now. I'm getting a little lightheaded. I'm not breathing right now. Okay. Annalise tries to write that note to Sam. Later. She keeps trying. She was like, yep. So Frank's the one who got a baby killed. Yep. So... After me, I mean, uh, my the house burned down. Your sister's trying to go and take the house from me, even though she never had the claims to the house to begin with. Uh, my career's in the tubes. I'm trying to make my way back up. So then she goes to her, um, goes back to Isaac and lets him know that, look, I couldn't write the letter because of this. And so that's when she divulges the fact that she lost a child. I, I already knew that Isaac, the way that he was talking, he was like, I, I lost a child too because when he was talking to his ex-wife he she was like Th that's something really personal that's something so personal and close to home this is a true conflict of interest what are you doing um Annalise was saying how her body wasn't the same for years she felt like something was missing that's why she was trying to do the in vitro um that's why she subjected herself to all that mess but it's just it's too much it was too much and um, her relationship with Sam changed, who she was as a person changed. And then she gets upset because she's like, wait a minute, why do you keep trying to force stuff on me? Why do you keep trying to force your ideas on me? I go and tell you things. I go and divulge um, my secret, pour out my heart, my heart, my heart. And you decide that you want to go and you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. You're just trying to go and steer the conversation and steer the narrative in a way that is beneficial to you but i'm tired of it i'm tired of it and i don't want to talk i said okay you better back up because you know Annalise, you know Annalise is. so then again we see him talking to his ex-wife about that bonnie's trying to figure out okay maybe i went a little bit too far uh with this we're gonna go and just steamroll Annalise tip because i'm hurting some decent people the da said i don't care i don't care i just want results I don't care about Annalise. I don't care about them. That's not my problem. I'm going to actually, um, you know, reassign you off of this case because clearly, clearly this is a conflict of interest. Thank you for letting me know. I looked at him like, are you kidding? I looked at him like, so we're going to have to kill him. We're going to have to kill him soon. Annalise was talking to Connor and Connor was trying to figure out, okay, how can we help this family? And that's when Annalise had the idea of what you said before 
actually made sense. What you said before about televising, you know, the grievances. So then she goes on TV. She goes on TV with the boy, um, with the inmate son. He's talking. He's essentially saying that my family, we're going to be kicked out of our house um, wrongfully because our mom was incarcerated. And the DA is trying to railroad us to stop Annalise um, from doing a civil um, class action suit against the department. And it's wrong. And see my grandma here. You see my little brother here. And I said, this little boy's awesome. This little boy is awesome. But Annalise goes and steps in. It's like, look, here's how this works. I'm going... I, I, this is one of many cases that's actively going on. And this is why I want to do my civil lawsuit. Because there's so many people that have been negatively affected by that office. And not being given a fair shot. So I just want the opportunity to go and help them. Everyone at the DA office is looking like, oh my God, we just screwed ourselves over. Bonnie actually tried to warn you. She did. But oh well. Oh well. Nate was happy. He was like, eh, eh. Um, we see that, again, Annalise is still launching it. And she went back to the councilman and was like, look, here's how this works. You're going to go and help us out or else we're going to go and bury you. So he approves. He gets the approval and shows it. Annalise shows it to her, um, her bunkmate, her ex-bunkmate. And her ex-bunkmate's uh, son was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Say, excuse me? Say thank you. Thank you or whatever. So then there was only part one. So her house is safe. Part two is if she's going to continue with the class action lawsuit. She, and Lee says, it's a huge risk. You have a lot to lose. She looked at her like, I'm in jail and no one has ever fought for me. Like you fought for me. You really think that you could possibly do something? Then that's good enough for me. And I said, oh, Annalise, Annalise. So now uh, uh, Oliver is over there with Michaela and Laurel. Oliver tells them the story of how he went and um, smoothed the IT guy and he looked at the new security. The new security is awesome. It's air, what's it called? Like air gapped room, which means that it's cut off from the outside world. So you can't hack it. There's nothing to hack. All the information is just in there. And that's it. It doesn't go out. That's it. And we know they're doing that because the pump company's going public. But the issue is how we're going to get in there. Guess only one, four, four, there's only four. And it's for each of the senior partners, which means now they're going to have to go and get that from Tegan. And I love that. Mikhail's like, what are you actually losing here? I mean, we're doing all this risking for, and for what? And it's like, you know... And, and Laurel was pissed because, like, how are you going and putting your needs over our friend being kidding? It's like, no, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're right. Like, forget. I understand. But we can get Wes. Uh, we can help expose this in a different way. It's just irking me the way that they're doing it. And I don't care what anyone says. So then we see the teddy bear. I said, oh, no. Someone, someone. The teddy bear is hacked. The teddy bear is a spy cam. I know it. And we see Asher. Asher set up the teddy bear so that he can actually see what they're doing. Michaela comes there and it's like, oh, wait, hold on. What's going on? Uh, Oliver comes home and he's trying to go and pretend like, oh, everything is cool at work. Uh, Connor is just so happy about actually working with Annalise. I said, okay, that's great. That's good. Whatever. Asher finds out that, hey, we're doing this because... Uh, Laurel's father killed Wes. That's the information that came out. Frank goes over, he passed the LSATs, and he said, I'm going to support you, I'm going to support that baby, regardless if it's Wes's or it's mine, because I love you. And so then he kisses her, I said, they better not have sex in his door. They better not have sex in there. They better, they better not, they better not, because I'm telling you this right now, I'm going to be over, I'm going to be over, I'm going to be done. Um, Michaela, Asher still left, because he was like, you so you did all this just to lie to me, just to finally tell me the truth. And then he's like, you know, I'm still done. And because that's the thing, Asher, Asher's kind of weird. 
Aster's kind of weird when it comes to this stuff. So then he goes over to Bonnie's house trying to see Frank. Frank wasn't there, but Bonnie was just so emotionally distraught and drinking that he goes and hugs her. And I'm thinking, oh, God. Oh, God. Here we go with them two again. But Asher is the type that he he's someone who needs to feel needed. I've noticed that. We see that Isaac, we see him looking at a video of his daughter. His daughter was grown. So that made it even worse. His daughter is grown, so that explains why it hurts him so much. This probably happened a only like a couple of years ago. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, now, his wife goes and meets up with Annalise. And I'm thinking, what? So then we flash forward to a week later, and it's Annalise. She's in the drain. Her feet are like bloody, and we see blood kind of on her. I was just trying to figure out, what the heck is going on? Like, was that a cut? Like, what? I was just trying to figure out what was I looking at. So that was it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Huh.